Resting in Long Beach Harbor is the RMS Queen Mary, a colossal ship that was bigger, faster and more powerful than the Titanic. The 1,000-foot ship began her life when the first keel plate was laid in 1930 at the John Brown Shipyard in Clyde, Scotland. The Depression delayed her construction between 1931 and 1934, but she was finally completed, making her maiden voyage on May 27, 1936. For three years, the Grand Ocean Liner elegantly glided through waves with the world's rich and famous, including the likes of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Greta Garbo, Clark Gable, David Niven, Mary Pickford, George and Ira Gershwin, Sir Winston Churchill and many more notable names. Considered by the upper class to be the only civilized way to travel, she held the record for the fastest ever North Atlantic crossing. When World War II broke out in 1939, luxury travel ceased immediately and the ship was transformed into a troop ship that would become known as the Grey Ghost. During this time, her capacity was increased from 2,410 to 5,500. By the end of World War II, the ship had carried more than 800,000 troops, traveled more than 600,000 miles, and played a significant role in virtually every major Allied campaign. She also survived a collision at sea, set the record for carrying the most people ever on a floating vessel, and participated in the D-Day invasion. At the close of the war, the ship began to transport more than 22,000 war brides and their children to the United States and Canada. Known as the Bride and Baby Voyages, she made 13 voyages for this purpose in 1946. Its duty to the war complete, the Queen Mary was refurbished and resumed her elegant cruises in July 1947, maintaining weekly service between Southampton, Cherbourg and New York. Sadly, by the early 1960s, transatlantic cruisers were falling out of fashion, due to air travel becoming affordable for the masses. In 1963, the ship began a series of occasional cruises, first to the Canary Islands and later to the Bahamas. However, without central air conditioning, outdoor pools or other amenities now commonplace on cruise ships, she had lost her allure for those craving modern luxury. 
In 1967, she was withdrawn from service after more than 1,000 transatlantic crossings. That same year, the Queen Mary was sold for nearly $3.5 million to the city of Long Beach, California, for use as a maritime museum and hotel. On December 9, 1967, she made her final voyage to Long Beach. After 1,001 successful Atlantic crossings, she was permanently docked and soon became the luxury hotel that she is today. This historic floating hotel attracts thousands of visitors every year. It has also attracted a number of unearthly guests over the years. In fact, some say the Queen Mary is one of the most haunted places in the world, with as many as 150 known spirits lurking upon the ship. Over the past 60 years, the Queen Mary has been the site of at least 49 reported deaths, not to mention having gone through the terrors of war. So it comes as no surprise that numerous disembodied guests and workers continue to walk within her rooms and hallways. Located 50 feet below water level is the Queen Mary's engine room, which is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. Used in the filming of the Poseidon adventure, the room's infamous door 13 crushed at least two men to death at different times during the ship's history. The most recent death, during a routine watertight door drill in 1966, crushed an 18-year-old crew member. Dressed in blue coveralls and sporting a beard, the young man has often been spied walking the length of Shaft Alley before disappearing by door 13. Two more popular spots for the ship's other spirit guests are its first and second class swimming pools. Though neither are utilized today for their original purpose, holidaymakers long dead are of course not aware of that. In the first class swimming pool which has been closed for more than three decades, women have often been seen appearing in 1930s style swimming suits wandering the decks near the pool. Others have reported the sounds of splashing and witnessed wet footprints leading from the deck to the changing rooms. Some have also spied the spirit of a young girl clutching her teddy bear. In the second class pool room, the spirit of another little girl named Jackie has often been seen and heard. 
Apparently, the unfortunate girl drowned in the pool during the ship's sailing days and remains where her last memory was. Her voice, as well as the sounds of laughter, have been captured here. However, author and paranormal investigator Cher Garman points out there are no known drownings to have ever occurred on the ship, although she admits Jackie is there. In the Queen's Salon, which once served as the ship's first-class lounge, a beautiful young woman in an elegant white evening gown has often been seen dancing alone in the shadows of the corner of the room. Yet more odd occurrences have been made in a number of first-class staterooms. Here, reports have been made of a tall, dark-haired man appearing in a 1930s-style suit, as well as water running and lights turning on in the middle of the night. Also, phones ringing in the early morning hours with no one on the other end of the line. In the third-class children's playroom, a baby's cry has often been heard which is thought to be an infant boy who died shortly after his birth while on board the ship. Other phenomena occurring throughout the ship are the sounds of distinct knocks, doors slamming and high-pitched squeals, drastic temperature changes and different types of aromas without any apparent source. Recently, the ship's most haunted room, stateroom B340, has been renovated and reopened as part of the hotel. Paranormal researchers can reserve the room to investigate the numerous reported phenomena from past decades. It has been closed for over 30 years, the general manager at the Queen Mary said. About eight months ago, we decided to open the room up, and that started with handling the renovations first. B340 is now equipped with items to help guests open a connection with the spirits, including a Ouija board, tarot cards and a crystal ball. On the bathroom wall there's an inscription detailing how to summon Bloody Mary, a ghost that is said to present herself to anyone that chants Bloody Mary three times while facing the mirror. It was closed for so long because of all the negative experiences that have happened in there. Some of the paranormal phenomena even caused people to leave the ship at times in the 70s and 80s, when the ship was new to Long Beach. Ghostly manifestations in the room have ranged from minor encounters, including knocking on the walls or door in the middle of the night, the sink faucet turning on and off by itself, or the bathroom door creaking from side to side to more personal encounters including seeing a figure looming over the bed or hearing ghostly voices trying to engage in a conversation with the guests. There are times when certain feelings will overcome your body while you're on the ship, he said. This room happens to be one of those.
Apparently, back in the 60s, during one of the final transatlantic cruises before the ship was docked in Long Beach, a man went crazy and brutally murdered two women. His crimes were discovered and he was locked in the third-class stateroom, either B-222, B-224 or B-226. The door was locked and a guard was posted outside. A little while later, he started pounding on the door saying someone was in there with him, trying to kill him. The guard ignored him, thinking it was a ruse to escape. After a while, the passenger quieted down and the guard figured he had went to sleep. The next day, when the ship arrived in New York, the crew summoned NYPD detectives and they went to apprehend the murderer. When they opened the door to the stateroom, they found the man had been ripped apart and his entrails and limbs spread all over the room. Forensic pathologists have determined he could not have done this himself. When the ship set sail on its next crossing, paranormal reports started coming in about that stateroom. When it was docked in Long Beach in 1967, the three third-class staterooms were combined into the larger guest room B340, and the reports continued. By the 1980s, B340 was closed to booking because guests would leave in the middle of the night. Over the years, different variations of the same story evolve. A man killed his family in the cabin, a woman killed her husband, a husband killed his wife, a lone passenger's throat was cut, the list goes on and on. For some reason, nobody can trace back exactly what happened. The ship's records show nothing happening in any of those rooms. Did the ship owners decide to omit detailing this terrible tragedy in their records? Or is it just legend? If it is legend, one thing is for sure. The paranormal activity in that room and the rest of the ship is very real. Well, my dear friends, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. I hope you enjoyed our cruise together. Who's still full from the buffet? I couldn't eat another morsel. Uh, you know, years ago, years and years and years ago, my parents took me to see the Poseidon Adventure when I was a child in Australia. And it was the movie that left the biggest impression upon me. And I don't know why. I, I don't really have a thing for cruise ships. I haven't really been on any apart from the, the crossing we made to Australia when I was a baby, which I don't remember. But that movie just, yeah, it just blew me away. It really did. Um, and watched it quite a few times since then. And then later years, when I was a sort of preteen, my sister bought me a sort of compendium of weird events throughout history. And in it was the story of the Titanic, which at that time had not been found. And it absolutely fascinated me. You know, that just, I locked onto that. And do you remember back in the 80s? I think, was it 88, when they found the wreck in two parts there? And they had a, I think it was like an hour special with Telly Savalas hosting it, where they were looking at the items they had found. I mean, I was glued to the screen. This was, I was in my element, you know. And to this day, 
I'm still fascinated with the tragic story of the Titanic. I made a few videos on, on my YouTube channel in the early days. Uh, it's just all that elegance, you know, all those, the opulence of the ship and the, the decadence of the people on it, uh, all the rich and famous, and just whoosh, down it went. It, it's just something about it uh, which fascinates so many people. I, I remember um, all through my childhood years, we had, you know, the photo albums, back in the old days of photo albums, uh, which I still think are wonderful things, you know, having them on an iPhone or an I, or a laptop, it's just not the same. And my mother had this old postcard of the ship that we emigrated on. And in the early days of the internet, you know, you were starting to s discover what happened to things and just starting to s discover the names of songs you heard for years you never knew the title of, you know what I mean? And uh, I just did some research and I found out that that ship that we traveled on uh, had uh, crashed onto rocks, uh, had been sort of stuck there for years and then they finally stripped it for scrap. Um, and I told my mum that, you know, she was quite eh, quite sort of shocked to hear that, quite saddened in a way, you know, these, these memories. Uh, and that got me sort of looking uh, later in later years at videos of sunken cruise liners. It's sort of a lifelong fascination for me. I don't, as I say, I don't know why. Uh, and so the, the, the story of the, the Queen Anne, the HMS Queen Anne, also fascinates me. Uh, I'd love to visit one day. But once I get to America, uh, that, that's a definite. Um, uh, and I know they're making a packet out of it, you know, with the haunted, the, the haunted angle. But I still think there must be something to it there's just too many reports and and what i'm going to tell you next might make any skeptics think twice because it's quite strange years ago on when i was starting out on youtube i i created a video and i used some footage that a paranormal team had uploaded and it was um they had it on their website what it was was they had set up overnight cameras in, in the swimming pool area and in the changing rooms connected to the swimming pool area. And the cameras picked up quite a few things, but one of them was in, I think it was like a toilet cubicle. So I actually paused the recording just before uh, and I went to look for the video and it, an hour and a half I spent yesterday looking for it, couldn't find it. Uh, so I woke up this morning and I did a more refined search and I finally found it and found it also some very interesting information which I didn't know at the time. But before all this happened, uh, in, in those days, I think it was even before I even had a channel, I was checking out YouTube and there was a video on there and it was in, uh, titled something like Paranormal Team Explores Mausoleum and Encounters Malevolent uh, Disembodied Entities. And I'm not, even, I'm not going to even look for that footage. No, that, that freaked me out. I'll t tell you what happened. Now, this is no word of a lie. You can either believe me that some people say, oh, God, Oddie's bonkers. That's okay. I'm not trying to force anything onto you. I'm just going to tell you what happened. So, you know, make, make of it what you will. So I clicked on the video to watch. And those days, I wasn't really protecting myself. I didn't think that these things could actually come through the internet. I was totally naive back then. So I clicked on the video, and it was an underground chamber. I, th I think some people would call it a catacomb. And they went down, and uh, they were setting up the equipment. And suddenly, I didn't. It was such a shock to me. It felt like a punch through the screen, without any sort of physical damage, like a punch. And in my solar plexus, woof. And at that same time, my whole computer just went off. It didn't shut down. I wasn't getting a message saying we shut. It just went off. There was no power outage, and I felt ill for about a day afterwards. And then I started looking up on the internet, and people were saying, you know, that these th entities can use electricity and the internet to come through. So that must have been, I think, it must have been about a year, possibly six months or a year before the Queen Mary incident. Yeah. So when I found this footage at the time, and I thought, well, I can make that into a sort of, into a video, you know, a creepy video. At the time, I was experimenting with these videos, as you, as many of you will know. So I, I downloaded the footage. I, I uploaded the video once it was finished to YouTube, which I'm trying to recall here. That's why you're getting a few pauses here. There was a similar sort of thing. After I uploaded the video to YouTube, again, 
my computer just shut off. Boom. Uh, I didn't feel the, the punch or anything like this this time, but it just shut off. And then about 10 minutes later, I, I went to pick up my mobile phone and I noticed it was getting very hot. And I looked, really, it was getting so hot and I, I showed Odd at it. And about an hour later, I looked at it again and suddenly I could see the battery was just draining right down, right before my very eyes. You could see the green thing going all the way down and it got so hot, we actually put the phone in our fireplace, which wasn't on, of course, it was in summer, put it in the fireplace, thought if it catches fire, at least it'll be, you know, all right in there. And I thought, well, what the hell is going on? And then strange things started happening in the house. The TV started turning on and off by itself, noises during the night. I rang up um, Apple, it was an iPhone. I rang them up next day and explained to them what happened. I said, it got really hot, so, you know, and the, the battery just drained down. I said, have you ever heard um, of anything like that before? And he said, well, we have heard of sometimes the battery catching fire, but he goes, it, for it to get that hot and for the battery to drain out, then the phone would not work the next day. But I recharged the battery and the phone was fine again the next day. He couldn't explain it either. So after a couple of days of this, Odet said, you, you know, I would suggest getting rid of that video. Take it down. We connected it to that, of course. Take it down and delete what you have on your computer, the footage that you downloaded, which I did. And after that, it stopped all this strange stuff. There was more stuff. Uh, I can't exactly recall, but there was a lot of stuff going on. It all stopped after that. So I'm just saying, whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. I'm not going to force it on you. I'm just telling you what happened to the best of my knowledge and, and, and memory of it. And uh, it was interesting because I found the footage again a day. This time I'm not going to download it. I'm going to screen record it. Hopefully I've got a lot more protection nowadays. But uh, it was interesting what they wrote on the website about the area where the footage was. So let us go and have a look at it now. Any of you who are a bit worried about that, don't watch don't watch the next few minutes. We're going to have a look at that footage. So I finally found the footage this morning. Um, I don't think I would have found it on YouTube without actually looking on the internet itself. I found this website and this article is from 2010. So the footage was even before that. I told you it was quite old. So he's wrote, I wanted to cover the latest ghost video to spread across the internet. And now if it's spread across the internet, it's gone now. <laughs> because this is the only footage I found of it. And I knew it was from a, a, you know, a paranormal research association. It wasn't sensational like a lot of videos are. When I mean, I trawled through hundreds yesterday with teenagers with wide eyes and I slept in the haunted room, you know, that sort of stuff. But th th this was a, you know, a serious research team. Um, so the pool is supposedly one of the most haunted areas of the old luxury liner and has the ghost of a little girl who frequents it, frequents it can't speak and has the ghost of a little girl who frequents it while the changing stalls which I believe is the portion of the video has a negative energy vortex in it I didn't know that at the time I really didn't know that in fact I didn't it's only now making this video that I've really looked into the to the Queen Mary I have read a few things about it. I didn't know that that there was a negative energy vortex connected to that part so the video portrays a, a video recorder with night vision on and apparently the operator is fumbling around and catches the ghost sitting in the stall. And as the camera pans away, it seems the ghost was starting to stand. The viewpoint is skewed, the camera is shaky and it's a fleeting glimpse shot. We have talked about this before on, here on GT and to be brought up again as it appears the ghost's eyes are reflecting the night vision uh, IR. So is this a ghost infrared that is? So is this a ghost? I can't help but to kick I can't help but to cook around the reflecting eyes which is the most telltale part of the video. Can a ghost reflect back infrared light? Obviously a ghost can reflect light or else it wouldn't be seen but would its eyes? The ideas of reflecting eyes is a stumbler for me as it would seem to suggest a solidity in the apparition. It would be just easier to call this a hoax, uh, and he thinks most likely it is. I'm not so sure about this since what I experienced, since the video appears produced for the beginning portion of it, yet I would be disappointed by it since I visited the APRA website. That's the, um, I'll have a look at them in a minute, uh, who, they, who they are again. 
and looked through some of their pictures and found them quite believable. And I did too. I found the team to be, you know, quite serious. It was nothing sensationalistic about about their uh, videos. Um, I know I am countering myself believing in pictures since I say they are the easiest to manipulate. So here's a video in its entirety, ghost or hoax. Now, as I say, I'm not saying it's real, but I do know what happened to me when I downloaded the footage. That was very real. So let's 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 have a look at this footage now. So this is the video here. Uh, it's by the American Paranormal Research Association, and it is 2010. Okay, I thought it might have been a bit earlier, unless it's a re-upload they did. But um, I, I thought I'd found it on their website. I'm not entirely sure anymore. Anyway, here we go. So, electric magnetic field sweep. Sitting in one of the right hand changing stalls. A stranger keeps stopping all the time. Sorry about that. And now it's not playing at all. This is really weird. What has happened here? Okay, my viewers, now you're seeing some weird experiences here. The video is not playing at all. Okay, well, let's try again. That was very strange. Uh, we'll see if we can get it to, to play right through this time. And uh, we'll have a quick chat at the end. You know, actually, that video doesn't show very much, and I don't think that was the video. I recall that the shot showed the figure like crouching, and it was from an, an, an angle sort of nearly directly above the, the whatever it was in the stall, and it blinked. Its eyes were reflecting, and it blinked, and it was crouched. That That is not the footage I meant. Also, the footage that I watched was taken from a static camera. It wasn't someone holding it. it. And I do remember I read at the time it was cameras that they'd left. They had positioned them in the changing rooms and had left them there overnight. And that is what they recorded on it and, and saw it the next day. It was a static camera above the stall. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is not the footage, unfortunately. But I thought I'd show you that anyway. In fact, it may not even be the same team. It, it may have been someone else entirely. And that's the only thing, closer thing I could find to the to, to changing room surveillance footage of the Queen Mary at night. Uh, but I think the original footage has gone now, has been deleted. 100% positive that was not the footage that I've just showed you. Uh, yeah, the figure was actually crouching down, looking up, and and blinked, and uh, that that's that was the footage that uh, caused all that uh, problem. I cannot find it. If anyone finds it out there, I'd be very grateful. But I don't think it's somehow. I don't think it's on the internet anymore. In some ways, I regret deleting the footage, but uh, I didn't. I didn't regret it at the time. I can assure you. That that footage there. I don't know what that is. Could be a toilet roll holder. I don't know what. I'm not saying that's a spirit there, but I do know what happened when the other footage that I saw. What happened when I downloaded that? Uh, that is no word of a lie. Um, if you, some people may think it's a coincidence, what happened with my phone and with the computer? Okay, and the other incidents in the house with the TV and turning on and off. But I don't. I do believe in some coincidences, but not not that one. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that with you. You can mull that over. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it just annoys me that that footage is no longer around. But uh, I'll keep looking. One day I might find it. Anyway, my viewers, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off now. Let's get this. It's, it's over 30, 30 odd minutes. It's been a, quite a long one. Me, mostly me blah blahing. <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, the situation seems to be under, under control now regarding the videos on Patreon. I've I've replaced them all. I don't think you'll have any more issues now. Any of you have any problems with uh, watching Vimeo, please contact me. Let me know and I'll be able to help you out with that. Okay. Take care. God bless, my friends. Bye-bye.